It's the Brace Game Jam 2022 where we have one week to make a game about a hidden theme. Here we go. I'm going to be using Python for this game jam. One, because it's new and exciting for me, which is perfect to learn for a game jam. And two, because I have to learn Pygame for school, and who doesn't love killing two birds with one stone? The only minor problem I have now is that I have no idea how to use Pygame. Now that I'm fluent in Python, this should be easy. First, we need to install Pygame and wait 10 years for it to run before we can... No, wait, no, this isn't Unity, it just works right away. Excuse me, just, just one second. Ignoring the ball for now, we have two paddles and a lovely feature where they randomly decide to reset themselves for absolutely no reason. Yeah, it turns out I can't even copy and paste code correctly. Every frame we check for key presses to move each paddle, and also make sure we don't move them off the screen. Other than making me realise this challenge is a lot harder than I expected, this is so bad, it's time for a ball. Just like we ignored the ball earlier, the turns have been tabled and the ball is ignoring us. This won't do. So, uh, hippity hoppity, you will abide by the laws of physics, while so I'll get your code to the moon, set the moon on fire, launch you into the sun, freeze the sun, and eat you for breakfast. Dumbledore said calmly. With that, the ball promptly decided to stop being broken, and as if by magic, the collisions now work. The scoring must have overheard me too, because it went from this, to working just as expected. Now our path must diverge from the tutorial, because it doesn't cover how to add any art. But before we can learn how to do that, we need to actually make some. Egg, egg, egg. This is already gallery ready, but we can do better. I had a bit too much fun making some chicken stick ping pong bit things, and after ignoring the call from Peter about how this is unnatural, things are looking so much more delicious. Bouncing eggs around this game does make me a bit nervous they might crack though, so I heard this rumour that says eggs don't break if they land on grass. I don't know if this is true or not. Let's find out, shall we? Don't worry, it's, uh, it's made out of eggs, it's fine. But just to be extra safe, let's add a grassy border to the window. And voila, les pong. For just a few days work, I'm really proud of this, but we are two days down and have a whole lot of theme left to incorporate. Here's the plan. Micro games. But flipped on the head. Pong, but it's boring. Come on, let's get to the good bit. Micro games are infinitely scalable, so if I decide to spend the weekend playing video games or wasting my time doing uni work or something, then I can just add or remove them as I need to make sure I finish in time. So we already have Pong, that's great, but this isn't Unity. We can't just double click over to a new scene and hey presto, new mini game time. We're gonna have to do this ourselves. Introducing finite state machines. Say we have two scenes, A and B. Well, instead of maybe the most obvious way to do this, which would just be having a boolean or a number to track which scene we want to be in, instead we just define our two states in separate files and connect them via transitions. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy, time to make chess a lot more confusing. I, I meant confusing. That sounded a lot better in my head. But it's okay because bunnies! There's no reason for this, I just got so excited when I saw them and thought they were so cute you might like them too. I asked if they wanted to play chess, but they hopped away unfortunately. So it looks like I'm going to have to make my own single player version. I'm going to make a Bunny King the bad guy because I'm holding a carrot sized grudge against who I thought was my friend. Bunny chess sounds really bad, but luckily for me, really bad chess is actually a thing. Where normal chess rules apply, other than the very first one being different. The starting position. You know that time we were the last at chess club and all the boards were taken, she just grabbed a spare replacement pieces bags and just set the board up with whatever garbage you had no matter how incredibly unfair it might be? Congratulations, you just invented really bad chess. I was so excited to make this, I dove right into the art, and just as I was about to code, I remembered that chess is a two-player game, and AI is probably definitely out of the scope for this project, so, um, whoops, in the bin it goes. That was a waste of time. This was pretty disheartening, but I find whenever I'm feeling burnt out, a long walk and a trip to the botanical gardens near me is an amazing way to wind down and relax. While there, I got my idea for the next micro game, Koi Bean Fish Fishing, because look at that, they're so cute! <laughs> But the evil game dev in me does have me wondering what would happen if we disturbed things a little. Obviously I did not throw it in, just don't. <laughs> don't come after me again, Peter, please. <laughs> I love how diverse all the different fish are in colours and sizes, so I spent some time drawing them and getting them moving around the screen. Sometimes some of them absolutely zoom me around the pond, which I also wanted to replicate, so at random intervals some of the smaller fish will just do a little tiny sprint, because why not? He just looks really happy. I think we could all do with some happy fish high energy right now. Now, <laughs> thank goodness I have my girlfriend with me, because she spotted this fiendishly well-hidden black fish at the bottom of the pond, which gave me an idea for the special power-up, just like that ship no one ever hit in Space Invaders. Next! I thought this was hilarious, but I slowed it down to make it actually playable. Most of the fun in that. But you've all probably seen Snake a thousand times since the thing came out about 20 years ago. It even has a terrible remake on my old Nokia phone. So let's just speed this up. Bam, here's the final thing. And here is how we're going to ruin it. So Snake is the final game in this micro gauntlet, and you know what else is a snake? Oh, Robberus! Damn, that segue was smooth. I can already hear my phone ringing. Sorry, Linus. I'm too busy making the only win condition chasing your own tail. No, seriously. The Ouroboros is an ancient symbol of a snake or serpent eating its own tail, signifying infinity, the circle of birth, life and death, all that. 
amazing funness that I don't understand. But I thought since that's normally the exact opposite of what you want to do with Snake, it'd be pretty funny if I made that the title of the game. So, uh, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. That, that's how you beat the game. Because dogs like chasing their chails or something. I don't know. I love hidden riddles like this. Reminds me of the time I built a puzzle game where I hid the answer on the itch page itself as well as in the game. So just like the clue now is the name Ouroboros, the clue back then is that you had to press P to turn the camera and reveal the answer. This is a great way to get some interactivity into your games that no AAA developer can ever do. You're never going to beat him making a game that's amazing, so you might as well beat him in a game they can't even play and make something really unique. I say as I tried to remake three of the most common and overmade games of all time. At least it wasn't Minecraft again. We, we get it, you can make Minecraft stop. <laughs> we don't need another one. Hello, my one. That one actually quite good. Which one is your favourite? Be sure to let me know and if enough people are interested, I am all for making a funny bullshit game a reality. Sub now to save me from the chicken uprising and I'll make it happen. Happy coding everyone!